So did you have him blocked on social media? Because he was trying to reach out to you. He was like, hey, this is not feeling good. You're ghosting me. You know, what's up with the money? You never respond. Yes, I had him blocked. Why? You knew you owed him something. Whether you thought it was a joke or not, you, you owed him at least $440. So why, why block him? Because I kept trying to explain to him what was going on, and it was just nonstop. What was going on? My inability to pay him back. The 440 at least? Yeah. Is that true? Did he explain uh, to you, listen, I'm having a hard time, I'm, I'm going to pay you back? He did initially, there was kind of a couple, like, I'm at the bank right now waiting for some funds to get released. My intention is to pay you. Okay. Then I gave him another, I was like, I'll lay off a little bit. Okay. You know, I'll give you another week. And then when I actually filed the lawsuit, well, you know, what I wrote in there was that all I want is the $440 if you settle this with me outside of court. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, if we take it all the way, then, you know, yeah, I'll go for 2000 But I'm reasonable, you know, I know things happened. Just talk to me. And he didn't? Nope. Okay. I'm going to open it up to my colleagues. Mr. Hackle, the two of you were friends? Loosely. Well, I don't understand what that means. That means we met through a third party, and, you know, I can meet anybody where they're at. I have a very wide group of friends, you know. I love people and their diversity. I trust until it's broken, you know, and we're basically at that point where it's been broken now. And so I'm starting to see the true colors. Just like you guys are seeing, you know, what's going on, things not adding up, that's, we're all in this together. Uh, well, let me ask you this. <laughs> you lent him $440. I did. Do you think getting back 2000 which you're suing for, is fair? Yeah, I do think it's fair. Why? Just tell me why. At this point in time, it would be like a punitive damage issue. Interesting. You know, this has caused me damage. How has it caused you damage? Yeah. So I was expecting this loan to be repaid on February 26th. I am on a very tight budget. So I had to go without having a vehicle because I was going to go to repair that. I've had to rearrange my finances. There's late fees, et cetera. He caused you harm by not keeping his promise. Exactly. What, what do you think about that? Have you read the text exchanges? I uh, lived plaintiffs? them, Your Honor. Excuse me? I lived them. But none of them indicated in any way that you weren't being serious about this. You sure you don't want to tell us something more? Every now and then we see a case where I feel like we're missing something. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a piece here that we don't see? Not for me. I have nothing more to say on it, Your Honor. Nothing more. So there's something we're missing. We're, he just but, doesn't want to talk about it. Mr. Garrison I mean, is not going to tell us what it is. Right. So had he not thrown around the $2 yeah. million, you wouldn't have given him this $440, would you? I might have, just because he said he was stranded down in Louisiana on the street. You know what I mean? If he had just said he would pay me back the 440 as it were, I think we would have been fine. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. all you really had to say. You got robbed. Just, do you have money you can lend me? I, I don't understand why you had to tack on $1,000. I didn't. You, you did via honor. text. Did. You said you lived it. You're not remembering your own texts. You offered that on your own. You just threw that out there from the start. Well, knowing how Mr. Hacker is, then... Well, what is he from your that's, perspective? That's between Mr. Hacker and I. Okay. The parties are excused while we deliberate okay. on this matter. Thank you both very much. This courtroom is now in recess. Go ahead and next one. Right. Okay, well, I saw no evidence that this was, in fact, a gift. So I think the amount that he gave him, which he's proven, $440, is a given. To me, the question is, what do we do on top of the $440, if anything? It's just flat out against Oregon law to charge 300% <laughs> interest on a loan. I do think that the defendant fraudulently induced him to turn over the money at a time when he needed it. I agree. And made it more palatable for the plaintiff to give him money. On the other hand, I don't think that $2,000 is, is a problem. I think we should just tack on some interest. What would be the interest for... The maximum in Oregon is 9% if you're not a financial institution. Right. And that's, so it's and only that's two another months thing, ago. too. It's two months ago, yes. So what real... I mean, listen, he's on unemployment, so I understand the need for the money back quickly, but I it's only been two months. But I don't doubt that he may have suffered some damages. I mean, I might, on his Facebook message to him, he was like, come on, I need some money. I'm out of cigarettes. Ah, not rent. <laughs> <laughs> cigarettes. So, I, I don't know about that, uh, but what, to what give about, him a little something is okay. Making, but, what about making the $440 500 If was, you had a late fee transaction you, you to your bank. You read my mind. So I think $500, it's, not because we're approving of an above no. usurious interest rate, but because he testified that he had late fees as a result of overdrawing his bank account Absolutely. in order to make this loan. I agree. Okay. I agree. So I agree. We have a verdict. We have a verdict. verdict. It's unanimous. For $500.